Hey everybody, Terry aka Snowy44 here and I am going to do a tag video as you can see from up above the the name is The Seven Deadly Sins of Knitting and Crocheting. I am going to try and make this quick, one, because I'm at work and it's been one of those nights so far, and two, because I don't have that much charge on my battery. For some reason when I try and charge it at work it doesn't last. So I'm going to go through these as quick as possible, but anybody watching this, you have been tagged, so come join everyone else and let us pick your brain and see what your seven deadly sins are. So first question, number one, greed. What is the most expensive and least expensive yarn you own? My most expensive yarn is actually my least expensive yarn at the same time, only because of the cost I paid for it. I purchased um, Lion Brand Suede, which at the time I bought it, you couldn't get Lion Brand Suede for any less than 6 or $7 a skein, depending on where you bought it. Um, I actually found it at my local dollar store for a dollar a skein. So yeah, most expensive is least expensive. There's also another Lion Brand yarn I purchased at a thrift store for a dollar a skein that usually goes a good six seven dollars a skein so yeah my most expensive is also my least expensive number two is wrath what pattern designer do you have a love-hate relationship with I don't really know too many designers to be honest I don't really pay that much attention to who designed something there is only one designer I am kind of familiar with and that is Rebecca Danger who does the Big Book of Knitted Monsters and only because I have done so many of her monsters and I love her patterns. They're clear, they're to the point. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, um, don't really hate any designers. The only thing I hate about designers or patterns is when they don't really test the patterns. I've run across knit sock patterns, I've run across crochet patterns that, you know, you go to make it and you're like, okay, <laughs> the instructions don't even fit, okay, the instructions are way off, and it makes you wonder if the designer just was so full of themselves that they thought, oh yeah, you know, I did it, it's done, send it off, pass it out to the world, and then this is what happens, and so, yeah, but don't really, you know, don't know too many designers, so can't really have that much of a love-hate relationship. Number three is gluttony. What kind of yarn do you purchase over and over with no shame whatsoever? My dears, that would be Red Heart. Because if you watch my TTMT videos, you see I work with it a lot. I like it. You know, it's just my yarn. And I do not feel any shame whatsoever when I purchase it. Because it's always at a really good price anyway. So, yeah. Number four is sloth. What project do you put off working on due to laziness? Don't really put off anything due to laziness. I mean, if I'm just feeling lazy that day, I'm not picking up anything and working on it. So I guess I can't put it aside because of laziness. If I set something aside, it's usually because I'm working on something else. Um, sometimes I set it aside because it's like really hot and it's difficult to work on it, like an afghan. I don't really work on afghans in the summer because of the heat. If it's something I'm doing pieces to, then I might work on it. But other than that, it's not laziness. It's I'm just not going to croak under a blanket. But no, nothing really because of laziness. Number five, pride. What finished item do you talk about to appear more skilled than other knitters or crocheters? Um, I can't really say I talk about something out of pride as much as being proud that it's done, that I've accomplished it. Um, you know, I think anybody who knits, crochets, quilts, whatever, whatever you do, if you talk about it a lot, it's... It shows that you're excited, that you're very proud of what you've done. And I've been crocheting for 40 years. I would hope my skills are more than somebody who just started, you know, a year ago. But I've seen a lot of up-and-coming people, you know, crafters who are just really starting out, and they're doing an excellent job.
So now I can't really say I brag about anything. I mean, I might joke around and say, hey, yeah, look at what I did. But I don't look at it as bragging as much as I'm just proud of it. Number six is lust. What attributes do you find attractive in yarn? Um, I'm not really too picky about my yarns. Uh, like I said, my number one yarn of choice to purchase is Red Heart. Um, I know a lot of people have issues with it. They don't think it's as soft. But, you know, I have taken whatever I've made, be it a sweater, an afghan, whatever. I wash it, I make it, I throw it in, I wash it, I dry it. And let me tell you, it's just as soft as any other yarn. Just got to wash it and get those fibers to kind of mesh. But I'm not really picky. The only, one thing I do love about yarn is the versatility. You can do so much with it. It is very versatile. So I love it. You know, that's just the fact that it's versatile. Number seven, Envy. What kind of yarn would you most like to receive as a gift? Uh, honestly, Deborah Norville has some absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous colorways when it comes to yarn. Um, she has worsted weight as well as soft weight yarn. Absolutely gorgeous colors. I have to say, you know, when I'm in a craft store, when I've been to the craft store, I really, you know, I just love her yarn. She has such gorgeous colors. So yeah, that would I would have to say that would be number one. I also I was popping around knit picks and they've got some nice sock weight yarns, but I've never really used a sock weight yarn to make anything. So yeah, I'd have to go with Deborah Norval. Beautiful colors. So there we have it, everyone. My seven deadliest sins have been answered. Um, I am going to post the questions in the description below. So I hope everyone will come along and let us see what your seven deadliest sins are and how you answer to them. So I am at work. I am a little tired. Like I said, I've been going, going, going since I got here. So. I'm going to now go sit down and try and have a bite to eat and relax, and then it'll be time to do my next rounds. So I will see everybody Tuesday with my next Talk To Me Tuesday video. And until then, I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. And just remember, I'm working. I feel sorry for me. Okay, enough of that. Okay, bye everyone.